So today we have uh, brass leadership, band leadership with uh, bandmaster Derek Lance of the New York Staff Band. Um, and so that's going to be a real treat today. Also, I've been told that um, at one o'clock today, make sure that you tune in uh, for Paul Woodward, principal trombone of the Black Dyke Band. Not quite as good as some of our army bands, but you know, they're all right. So um, before we get started, I would like to start with a word of prayer, and then uh, we're going to knock this thing out. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Um, we thank you for the beauty that, that you are, the love that you are, and, and the, just the blessings that you shower down on us each and every day, even in a year like 2020. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. Um, we, we believe that you are sovereign and you are perfect in every way. Um, and there are no mistakes when it comes to you. God, thank you for Derek and his leadership and everything that we're uh, going to discuss today. Let it um, uh, use him to speak life and encouragement into um, our leaders and our young people. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Derek, what's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. Um, so let's let's just kind of get into this. Um, we've we've slowly got some people building in. And uh, first, how about uh, you just tell us about yourself? What do you do? Who are you? Um, yeah, so I'll give the the quickest answer possible, which probably won't be very quick. Um, but I am the territorial music secretary in the USA Eastern Territory. Um, and uh, I lead the New York Staff Band, so that's uh, that's you know kind of the bigger parts of, of my job there. Um, Family-wise, I'm married to Lorena, uh, who also plays in the staff band. She plays trombone in the staff band as piano player as well. I have two daughters, uh, Isabel and Caroline, that are 11 and nine years old. So that's the the very quick snapshot of who Derek is. Yeah, you know, that's okay. my job and my family. So you told oh, me to go fast. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so important, <laughs> important question here. So if, if we had your daughters on right now, yep. they would say mom or dad. In terms of being a better parent or being, uh, you just know, the cooler. coolest, the coolest. Okay. So let's just make this very clear. <laughs> Lorena is a better parent than I am, right? <laughs> Like, you know, when it comes to having, you know, making them do their homework and do all those kind of things, right? She is the better parent. They would probably say that I am cooler because yeah. I like stop at McDonald's on the way home and bring them cookies or I like take them for ice cream because I just want ice cream, right? You know, that kind of thing. So they're like my, uh, my oldest, uh, Isabel, who is 11, I was like, hey, what do you want for lunch today? And like, she knows, like, if I just throw out like Chick-fil-A, like dad's oh, in, right? Yes. So it's like, you know, I'm just a sucker for everything. So like, yeah, mom's a better parent. I'm probably the cooler one. Yes, you know, which, is sad, the which is sad, which is sad because I'm not cool at all. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> um, okay. All right. And so um, tell us, uh, like, give us some background with your education yep. and, and, and where you're coming from with that. Yeah, so I um, you know, went to, I decided, I guess, pretty early on that I, like, I wanted to do the music thing. I wanted to play trumpet uh, for a living. That was what my hope was. Um, so I, my goal was always, honestly, to go to Juilliard. That was like, that's all I wanted to do. That's that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to be Anthony Barrington, right? That's what I wanted <laughs> to do, right? So uh, Don't anyway. Don't we all? Yeah. So I ended up, I went to the Curtis Institute of Music uh, in Philadelphia, um, you know, for my undergraduate studies. And then I went to the Juilliard School for, for grad school, um, you know, both for trumpet performance. Um, and then more recently, I went to uh, Seton Hall University, and I got a strategic leadership and communication uh, master's degree as well. So that's, uh, that's my education, you know, part there. Um, and then I guess if you're looking for a, um, a job, you know, timeline, uh, as soon as I was done with school at Juilliard, I went into the military at West Point. Um, so I was in the band there and I was a principal trauma player there for six years and then started working at THQ in the music department. Um, 
I guess probably like nine years ago now. So I worked for, for Ron Wakes Norris when he was the music secretary. And then I've been the music secretary for three, three years and change now or so. And so when you first got to THQ, uh, what was your primary role? Um, it, what was my job? Um, I'm trying to remember what it, what the name of it was now because we've switched the name since I've okay. taken over. But I was I oversaw uh, like the Croc Centers uh, in our territory. Um, I was in charge of like kind of our summer um, you know, music thing, the summer brass program that we, we run. I was the manager for the staff band, you know, for th for things, and then involved in everything else. But that was kind of the big pieces of of what I did. So Ron brought me in, and then I worked very closely with him, and then uh, took over from Ron after he was done. Okay. Yep. Great, man. Um, and, you know, I'm just curious, obviously we know that you lead the New York staff band. Are you mm -hmm. involved with any other bands in the area or anything like that? Or, um, so I, um, I lead my core band. Um, okay. so I started doing the, the core band, I guess probably 2003, 2004 while I was at Juilliard. Uh, so I started leading the core band then, and I did it, um, pretty much straight for you know, 14 years or so. Um, and then when I got uh, my new job, I kind of took a break. Um, I was in school at the same time doing my uh, studies at Seton Hall, got a new job, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, let me just take a, a little bit of a time out um, where I just play in the band. And that only lasted for about nine months or so. And then I've been leading the band since, you know, so essentially from like okay. 2004 up to now, um, I have led the core band as well. Great. Um, and then, you know, there was a, a period, um, a while ago, I led like an outside, you know, kind of brass band that I just, you know, started with a whole bunch of friends, you know, for a little while and did a, you know, a couple of recording projects and that kind of thing. Uh, but now at this point for me, it's pretty much like the staff band, the core band, and I really don't do a whole lot of anything outside of the Salvation Army. I'm just kind of 100% focused on that. Like I'll go play some other places at this point, but in terms of my leadership, um, I don't want to say I think it'd be a, a little bit of a conflict of interest in some places, but I, maybe it would be. So I'm just a hundred percent focused on the Salvation Army and what I need to do for them. Yeah, no, I think that's the right thing to do. So uh, there you go. Great, man. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm just curious, uh, you know, so uh, conducting or playing your horn, which do you prefer? <laughs> um <laughs> I'd say uh, right now, um, probably conducting, um, just because that's been like much more of my focus, you know what I mean, in the last handful of years. Um, I'd say like at my peak of both of them, I'm a better player than I am a bandmaster, right? I think I still have a lot to learn um, in terms of, of leading a band uh, where, not that I don't have a lot to learn playing, but um, I feel like I, I got to a fairly decent level on that. And I, I could talk about playing a lot and I right. think very, you know, in an educated manner, maybe more so than I can with a band. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I love them both. Honestly, like I just love music. Um, and I like to play, I like to lead. Um, I really like to be involved in any way possible so I can like head off any like, you know, questions and jokes about like me playing the djembe every Sunday for our territorial worship services. Like I just love doing that because I like kind of being a part of a team uh, and, uh, and doing that as well. So wherever you got to be, right? Whether it be exactly. triangle, shakers, djembe. I, I have, I have played some shaker recently. Uh, <laughs> that is true. Yes. So yeah, honestly, anything that I can do uh, within, within music, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, any way to contribute, especially right now, honestly, where yes. we're just kind of in like, you kind of just have to make things happen. Like I'll do whatever I'm physically capable of doing. You know what I mean? So. I like what you just said. You just, at, at a time like this, you just have to make things happen. And yeah. I think that's a, that in itself is something that we should all hold on to right there. Just make things happen. Yeah. Okay. Don't be content to just sit around. All right, cool, man. And that's what every Salvationist musician should be doing, right? Just, you know what? I'm not just a cornet player. I'm a musician. If you need me? I'm hopping in there, right? So thanks for being that example, Derek. Uh, just real quick. So did you grow up in the Army? Um, yeah, did... absolutely. Right. So uh, my parents were officers, right? Um, and I was, I was born. They were officers. We lived on the core building where, you know, the first point was. So, like, I, I knew nothing else, you know, but yeah. the Salvation Army. So essentially, uh, growing up, 
um, we lived on only in two divisions. So we lived in uh, Swanecki, which is you know, Southwest Ohio, Northeast Kentucky, and then Pendell, which is Eastern Pennsylvania. So those are the two places only that I lived as, uh, as an officer's kid. You know, since then I've moved to New York. Um, but those were, you know, those are the places I, I lived. And, um, you know, funny enough, uh, you're, you're not asking this question, no, you know, but, um, I, I often think, you know, there, there are some negatives clearly that go along with being an officer's kid and, and moving around and all that kind of thing. But I do think one of the great positives for me is that you are very quickly adaptable. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You get used to kind of starting over, you get used to making a new you know, set of friends, you get used to, you know, having to interact with people quickly. You know, so for me, I think in, in some odd way, like, it, you know, it's been helpful um, just in, in developing just my, you know, my personal experience, you know, kind of going all the way through. So, um, I, yeah, when you're looking back at it, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed every place we live, maybe minus one. Um, but, uh, yeah, all, all good. Um, yeah, so there you go. Officer's kid, involved my whole life. Um, haven't really gone to any other church in my life, minus you know, when I was at Curtis, there was a Presbyterian church down the road that I could walk to, uh, that I could, you know, that I would go to every once in a while. But other than that, uh, you know, Salvation Army since, you know, day one, you know. Good man. Yep. You know, not a lot of officers' kids could say that. So <laughs> right on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. So before we get into, you know, some of the, uh, conducting stuff, leadership stuff and everything like that, uh, I got a couple more things. Um, one, um, you know, like if you could say who are some of your, some, some real powerful influences in your life, whether it be musically, spiritually, anything like that, like, uh, who would they be or, and, 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 and what way did they influence you? Um, so I think like any conversation that comes uh, to influences, like it always sort of has to start with me, uh, like in a musical sense with Harold Bergmeier. Um, he was uh, my DMD in Pendel when I was growing, I was seven when we got there and we left when I was 13. So for a pretty long period of time, you know, he was you know, kind of there as, uh, as my mentor and, and leader. And I'll say, you know, with, with him, um, I guess back up a little bit. I think like, I think I got pretty good early on at playing, right? Where maybe I was ahead of of some other people. And um, I guess some would say that I was maybe overly confident in in my ability to do things and that kind of stuff. And it came out in in my attitude with other people. And Harold was very quick to to kind of check me in all the time, right? Um, And just, I don't want to say put me in my place because that sounds bad, but just make sure that I was um, maintaining humbleness, you know, understanding there was much more to come, you know, there is, there was much more to the whole thing than just, you know, playing more correct notes, you know, or being able to play higher than someone else. You know, so he really kind of kept it, um, you know, kept me in check and has been really helpful throughout you know, my life. And then, you know, kind of going, you know, forward in my college years, I was back in, you know, in the Philadelphia area. And then, so I was around Harold uh, in my college days. Um, and then uh, it's, you know, really interesting now the last you know, handful of years where um, we both occupy the same job yeah. in two different locations. So um, it's been fun to kind of, you know, then trade back and forth, you know, like, you know, what's happening in different places. How would you handle this? Uh, but to have that experience with someone from like you're seven years old up until I'm 39 now, like that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty long time to be able to keep going to that same person. Um, and then, um, I'm going to name multiple people if that's okay. Um, sure. you know, obviously Ron has been a huge, uh, you know, impact. Um, and you know, I, I never lived close to New York, so I was never really around Ron that much, you know, kind of growing up until, um, you know, I'd go to Star Lake and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, as big a supporter as you can possibly meet in your lifetime, uh, Ron, you know, like even when you're 13 or 12 and you, you know, come to your, you know, our star search things that we have, he would always take the time to, you know, to seek me out and talk to me and do whatever. And um, then when it came time, I was in, I was in college, you know, like, Hey, anytime you can come up for a staff band thing, you know, just let me know. And so I got involved, you know, with the band, you know, really just from him reaching out and just kind of having an open invitation there. And then obviously working with him uh, very closely for a long period of time, there's just so much you learn. And I absolutely uh, loved uh, working, you know, for Ron. Um, I love the, you know, the team that we had. And I, you know, I talked to him actually just probably about, you know, 30 minutes ago before I was on this. And like, we always kind of talk about, you know, how uh, we thought we really just made like the best one, two team, you know, like, 
you know, ever, like we really enjoyed working with each other and that kind of thing. So I often long for those, those days now. Um, so he's a huge, a huge influence. Um, and somebody else, uh, someone else that uh, I've actually never, never played in their core band or spent like a significant amount of time with them is Charlie Baker, um, who is the bandmaster at Montclair Citadel. And um, for me, really, one, I think he's probably like the, the best musician that we've really had, like lead a band, like in our, in our territory, you know, he's principal trombone of the Jersey Symphony for a long time. Um, but that, that guy, the absolute model of consistency, you know what I mean? Like always there has been for decades um, and about is about as good as you can get uh, in a, in a core bandmaster. Um, and he would give me, like, like I said, I never went to his core. Um, you know, I you know, haven't really been, um, you know, there a lot, but he would give me opportunities when he would miss rehearsals. Um, uh, he would call me to see if I could come, you know, and fill in for him. And so like, in some way, he really kind of gave me the confidence to think that I could do, you know, what I'm doing now. I don't know if he really thought about that. Um, but the first time I showed up for a rehearsal at Montclair, it was like at the edge of time, truth of flame. Like, it was just like one thing after another, like, all right, here we go. Like, you know, I had one day to prepare for rehearsal and knew I was going to come and do it. But I think in some, some way, you know, Charlie really gave me the confidence to, to think that I could do what I'm doing currently. Yeah. I mean, it's like, for me, like, I don't really know any of those guys. Like, Personally, I just know of them and, and how they are like legends and I've heard about them all throughout my life. So like, I think that's a, a pretty impressive and neat thing, right? That, that yeah. you get to be influenced like on a personal level by them. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I would say Dave, sorry, the one, uh, one of the thing is, and it's not really related to, you know, I guess going back in life in, you know, kind of the mentorship, you know, thing, but like, now I think that's one of the best things about like my position uh, at the moment is like the whole world is kind of available to you, you know, yeah. you know, to have, you know, to have mentor, you know, like I can pick up the phone and I can, you know, me and Steve Cobb can sit there and talk. And like, there is, you know, a bit of influence that comes there. I, you know, there's not a whole lot of doors that are, that are shut to me. You know what I mean? Where I have the ability then to, to kind of connect with a lot, which is always kind of a growth, you know, thing for me. And even with, you know, with what we've been doing, you know, throughout the summer, doing a whole bunch of, you know, things like this, you know, where we're interviewing people and interacting with people about different leadership things, whatever, like I sit there and I'm taking notes the whole time, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's just, there's so many people, you can learn something from, from everyone that you see lead um, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So there well, you go. Speaking, Sorry. speaking of learning, um, you know, I, I got a text from a good friend who's been a good influence on my life, uh, uh, Bernie Dake. And he, he wanted to know, um, since you lived in Philly, what exactly is the, your favorite cheesecake, cheesesteak place? Che cheesesteak. <laughs> I, I got the same text from Bernie. I, I like, I live and die like with Delisandros, right? There are some other options, right? But that's like, you know, that's the first one I had. So that's, that's what I say is, you know, is the right answer. So Delisandros, there you okay. go, Bernie. Yes. All right. Now, so we've got to know uh, a good bit about you. Um, this next portion here, before we get into the nitty gritty of leadership and all that kind of stuff is extremely important. And this is how we're really going to find out <laughs> the kind of person you are. Okay. Right. Is this, is this like either or, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so just be ready and, yep. and be truthful. Okay. <laughs> I'll try my best. I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Um, would you rather have a band out of tune or out of rhythm? Hey, out of tune. Come on. Out of tune. Come on. Come on. Out of tune. Would you, would you rather have a percussion section that doesn't watch or doesn't bring their music? Uh, doesn't bring their music. Okay. Let's see here. Um, would you rather live in a tree or a cave? Tree. Mm, nice. That's a good one. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. What is, is wrong with you? Is, ne is neither an answer? <laughs> John Williams or Bruce Broughton? John Williams. Okay. Orchestra or brass band? Ooh. Brass band. Okay. All right. I feel okay. contractually obligated to say brass band. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's or Wendy's? Wendy's. Ooh. Fried or grilled? Fried. Oh, good man. Good man. Coke <laughs> or Pepsi? This will tell a lot. All Coke. right. All yep. right. I like you. Apples or oranges? Apples. Ooh. Cornet or trumpet? Uh, trumpet. 
Uh, okay. All right. I guess so. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Okay. Good man. Good man. Facebook or YouTube? Facebook. Oh, YouTube's way better, man. Yeah. Dog or cat? Neither. Ooh, sweet tea or sweet tea? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Get out of here with that unsweet tea. Elton John or Billy Joel? This is important. Uh, Elton John. Oh, mm, I disagree. How about this one? ISB or NYSB? Um, New York staff man. <laughs> and here's one. Jimbe or Cajon? <laughs> Jimbe. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely Jimbe. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. How did All I right, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you're you're still on my good list. I All like right. how Bernie Bernie only opens up his uh, his know. face when he thinks I'm going to say something stupid. Like that's <laughs> all he opens it up for, right? So, okay. So the band's been around for what, like 130 something years? 1887 is when it okay. started. Okay. 1887. So do, do the, the math, math there. Folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and there's been a lot of great bandmasters uh, um, over the years, man. Um, so, so when you found out that uh, you were going to become the territorial music secretary and take over the staff band and all that kind of stuff, I mean, what was that like? How did that feel? I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight. Yeah. So I, I think some part of it is, is like you do have some kind of time to prepare for it in your mind. One, because I had to interview for the job, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't like someone just walked into my office and said, Hey, Derek, what do you think about doing this? Right. So it wasn't a surprise in that way. Um, so because you kind of, you prepare, you know, for the interview process and all that kind of thing, like you have to start to wrap your head around it um, for a long period of time, you know? Um, and so, you know, in the end, you know, was I, you know, really surprised that it was, it was me maybe, you know, but I was preparing as if it was going to be me, you know what I mean? Um, and that, um, if you know, if you know me, like basically like anything that pops into my head that, you know, could be coming in the future about any situation, like I'm going full bore at like ideas about it. Right. So, uh, when it's like, well, you know, Ron's going to be retiring, you know, all that kind of stuff, like all of my brain power goes into that and thinking about all the different things I might want to do or, you know, how you can you know, sell yourself, you know, to, to do that. So, um, uh, yeah. I guess that that's kind of the first thing is there's some time built into it in that you had to prepare for the process. Um, so actually, you know, when it came time and, you know, it was, you know, announced that I was going to be the new, new bandmaster. I, yeah, a little bit scary for a little while because you, you certainly don't uh, know exactly how everyone will react to it or whatever it might be. And I know, um, you know, I, I'm pretty young, you know, when it, when it happens as well. So that's another thing, you know, that, that kind of, kind of comes, um, but if you fast forward, um, you know, to, you know, when it was time for the first rehearsal, um, I can, I can honestly say this. Um, I like, I'm a preparer, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about that some more later. Um, I spent a lot of time, you know, getting my music ready, getting, you know, studying, you know, marking things up all over the place. So like no real stone is left unturned, you know, so when like it came time to like walk into rehearsal, you say your first opening words and then really it's just you're into rehearsal and it's no longer a big deal to me honestly like i i can really say that where uh, like i was nervous yeah going into it but like as soon as it started we had a thing to do you know what i mean our first engagement you know with the staff fan season we were talking about this a little bit earlier dave we have one rehearsal and then we do the welcome of cadets right so right that first rehearsal, it's like, we have seven items to play. So there's not really time to sit around and, you know, talk about whatever. It's like, it's business right away. Um, and so like, I really just felt like I came in really prepared. I had all of my stuff, you know, kind of lined up and ready to go. Um, so, you know, was it daunting ahead of time? Yes. Um, in the moment, um, not really because like I had just prepared myself for it that well. So I didn't really think anything was going to go wrong in the moment if that's a good answer there. Yeah, that's great. And that's a, that's a perfect segue into uh, getting into this, you know, particularly for um, young people who uh, I, I see some of them on here, uh, particularly from my division, who I know um, uh, are interested in, 
and jumping in and, and, and getting like a band started or doing things yeah. at their core, but maybe they right. don't feel, they don't necessarily feel qualified. Right. Um, but you kind of answer that a little bit right there. But so what would you say to them? So, you know, they, they want to do something, they want to get this rolling, but they're not sure that they're the person to do that. Yeah. So I, I would say the, the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, if you're, you know, a person young or old that is, you know, that has that desire and is interested in, you know, kind of starting a band or retooling it or whatever you might be, like, the first thing I would say is that you're willing, so you're off to a good start, right? Like, that's, right. that's the most important thing is that you're willing to do it. Um, and then the second thing I would say is, you know, like, think about whether or not you actually, you know, you're willing, but are you willing to work as well? You know, that's the second, second part of that. Um, and I would, I would say, you know, particularly in like in the States, um, you know, we're, we're lucky in that, you know, so if you're a local person who, um, you know, does want to do the band or whatever, you do have, you know, all these DMDs that are at your disposal all the time. You have re in our, our uh, territory, we have some regional people that you can go to right away. So go and pick, you know, pick the brains of those people to find out like, well, what music should I use? What, uh, what, you know, what are some just kind of tips to getting started? You know, what are some, you know, some little techniques that I can use to, to make things better, you know, quickly, you know what I mean? So that would be a couple of things is, yeah, the first thing is you're willing. So that's like, that's the best, right? That's the best thing there. Find some people that can come alongside of you, even if it is just in this way, you know, in a zoom call or whatever it might be. Now that we're all used to that it should be even easier. Um, and then the last thing I would say, I don't want to say the last thing, but the third thing I'll say um, is that it's okay to start small, like with a, a committed group of people and then bring others in after that. I think a lot of times you think, okay, I want to do a band, you know, so that's got to be, it's got to be 12 people or whatever to do it, or it's got to be 20 people. No, it can be four people. Um, and I always say it's better to start with like something that's going well with a committed group of people and then have that develop over time. It'd be better to start really, really solid with a small group of people and then expand it rather than make it just a, a huge thing that yes. maybe is harder to manage. Like I think, you know, especially for someone getting started, it's probably easier for you to manage five people that, you know, you know can do it really well and be committed to it than 25 people. You know, and that, those probably aren't two good options. You know what I mean? But like um, find a, a committed group of people uh, that you can work with and to kind of do that. So that's what I would say, it, it, just a couple things, you know, there. Okay. Okay, great. And um, so we're going to get into a little bit of practical um, uh, situations here. So first, um, as far as um, planning a rehearsal, mm -hmm. um, I mean, kind of take us through that. Like, you know, what, what goes into that? Um, how do you choose repertoire? Um, how do you, uh, balance your rehearsal between, you know, like not wearing the, your musicians out or, I mean, you're the New York staff and I don't know, maybe you just go got guns and blazing from beginning to end, you know? So, so what, what do you do about planning your rehearsal? Yeah. So um, I, there probably are some rehearsals that are like that, Dave. Right. Um, but that's, that's kind of not the normal or it shouldn't be the normal. Um, so I guess the first thing to talk about would be, you know, in terms of choosing repertoire, um, and, uh, I kind of think about, you know, three different things, um, and I'll explain them a little bit more. Um, you know, are they practical? Do they have like a purpose and, um, you know, something, you know, something for the players, is it good for the players as well? So like the practical part would be, you know, is it something that can be achieved quickly? You know, is it something that your group can actually play? Right. I think that's the first thing to think about where I know, okay, if you can get the most recent New York staff band recording and like, oh, I'd love to play this, but is that practical for you to do? And I think that's a mistake that a lot of, a lot of leaders make is doing things that are well, well above your heads, right? You know, find things, things that are practical um, that you could play quickly. And I'd say within that, you know, have a variety of things, things that you can play really fast, like in one week, things that'll take, you know, three or four weeks to, to rehearse, things that'll take a few months that are a long-term journey, right? So those are the couple things to, to think about there. Um, you know, the, the, the purpose portion of that would be, you know, especially for the core band, you know, uh, does it, you know, fit uh, the meeting theme for, for that week or something that's down the line, you know, does it have a specific purpose, you know, for, you know, for something that's coming? Is it a program that you're doing? You know, you think about, you know, Christmas, obviously that's all in a specific purpose there. You know, is there a moment in a concert that you're trying to create where this is, everything's going to this? So that's, you know, does that piece have a purpose? You know, every piece should have a purpose, you know, 
So that's the kind of thing there. And the last thing I would say is you want a variety of things for the players. Um, you want music that players will enjoy, right? You know, there's, there's some part of that. Um, you want things um, that will make them better, you know, and maybe that might not fall into the enjoy category, but there's things that like the New York staff band has to play just to get better. You know, there's things that my core band has to play just to get better, uh, even if it's not the most practical thing ever. Um, and I, I do think there, there is some part where um, you want to have some, some things that like everybody has just wanted to play. You know what I mean? Like, and it's honestly, it is very easy, you know, in terms of like the staff band to be able to do that. Like, okay, we want to play the president. It's great. We'll do that. We can, we can do that. And it's fine. Um, but in the same thing in the, in the core band, you, you know, to whatever level you're out at, you want to find things that people can play. Um, and then <clears throat> I'll say this, like when you start leading a, a band, I think the, the first thing that everyone thinks about is that you finally get to choose the music and how much fun that will be. Right. And I honestly find it to be super stressful because you don't want to get it wrong. It's you very know? stressful. Um, so like when I, at the start of, I don't know if it's been every season, but I think about every season, you know, with the staff band, I've written out to, you know, most, I guess, like probably, probably the principal players and just said, Hey, you know, are there things you want to play? Send me a list. So I would take their list and I would pull little bits and stuff from each of their lists so that they were actively involved in, in choosing the music. Um, and core, core band too, I have a couple of young guys that like, Hey, like, so what do you want to play? And that's, that's fine. So you pull in some of the things because then you have them kind of hooked into what you're doing because, Hey, they chose the music, right? So they're going to take that seriously at that, at that moment. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a couple of things in terms of picking, picking music. Um, in terms of building a, a rehearsal, um, I'd say you just want to have a balance of things to do. Like for me, I'll always start with him tune playing, right? I'll always start with that. Uh, that doesn't change, you know, whether it's the core band or it's the staff band. And, you know, truth be told, we probably do it for longer in the staff band than we do at the core. So for me, I always start with hymn tunes. And then usually I always go to some sort of selection that we can read quickly, um, whether it be like in one of the favorites books or something like that. So we'll go into that. Um, and then um, that would be kind of the first part of rehearsal there. And then um, you want to just have a variety of things, you know, that you're doing and a balance of things, right? So, um, and I think there's a, a couple of different things to think about there. You want to have some things that you can just play through, you know, for the purposes of reading. Um, then you also want to have things that you play through because you've already rehearsed on them and you want to keep them close. But then you have that portion of time where it's something you're really working on and you're kind of digging into to learning the notes or learning uh, learning all sorts of different things, right? So it's just a balance between, you know, for me, those three things, like, uh, you know, stuff that you need to read just because things you really need to work on, and then things that you just want to touch on to keep them close, because you have rehearsed them, but maybe you're not going to play them for a few weeks. So those are, um, I guess that would be kind of the, an overall structure of rehearsal. And then I could take a huge deep dive into like what one piece looks like, but I'm not sure if you want me to do that or not. David. Yeah, well, I mean, say say you are rehearsing. So you, your typical rehearsals. Well, for, first, let me start with this. Um, so you're you're saying more or less your approach to the staff band is similar to the core band. As Absolutely. Far as like yeah. The preparation and things. Yeah. Why so wouldn't it be right? Yeah, exactly. And it, like it's just uh, staff band rehearsal is longer, um, and the staff band music is harder, right? But other than that, the approach doesn't really change. I try to keep the same balance. Um, maybe at the core band, we go through, we read more things um, just to kind of have like, hey, just in case, you know, we need to change up something on Sunday, then I have that as an option. You know what I mean? Or um, like you rehearse something on Sunday then or on Tuesday, and then all of a sudden three people are sick for Sunday, you need to have some other options, right? So at the core band, that would be the one thing that's kind of different there uh, with, with that. So no, my approach doesn't change. Um, if I'm being honest, right? I spend more time preparing for the staff band rehearsal, but sure. I'll just put it out there. Right. Just sure. like I clearly spend more time preparing uh, for that, but the music is just harder and it's more intricate and there's, there's more detail to, to be worked on there. Okay. Um, so when you are in a rehearsal, are you the kind of guy that uh, pulls up the piece and all right, let's, let's run this down from beginning to end, or do you go straight in and start just picking at sections and then run it down or do you do you even like to run pieces down in a rehearsal or 
what what is your take on all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, so it really depends on uh, on the piece, right? It it mostly kind of depends on like how long it is. You know what I mean? Uh, more so than anything else, I think if it's you know if it's something that's twelve minutes long, I'm not sure you're going to run from from start to finish. You know what I mean? But if it's something new that we just got, uh, then we'll probably try to go from beginning to end just to get an overall you know look at something. Um, but I. I most certainly fall in the category of like, I'm going to stop and point things out and, you know, it's going to be that, right. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, you know, that's most of my, my time is going to be spent in, in that way. So let's say I have a, like a brand new piece of music. I will have in my brain kind of what the plan would be for like three weeks. Let's say like, let I don't, you know, name a piece. It doesn't really matter. Um, so like, okay, week one, it's something that's five minutes long. I'm just going to read this. And we'll go back and touch on anything that like catastrophically fell apart, right? If we just didn't make it, okay, I'll go back and regroup. And then we'll just leave that and just say, okay, so next week, you know, we are going to work on this and this and this. And so next week will be the, the you know, that'll be the work time, right? Um, and so that's how I'll kind of, you know, deal with that. And then the week after that, then maybe I'm not even doing the whole piece. I'm doing like one half of it, but really working hard on that. Maybe then the next week, it's the, it's the next half of the piece. And then on week four, you're putting it all together. And obviously that can change, you know, depending on what, what it is, but that would be, yeah, kind of take a first read and then bring it back the next week um, and then rehearse it, you know, more. Um, I really wouldn't start, you know, in terms of digging in the very first time a piece is in front of us, right? I don't think that's really fair to everyone uh, to have to sight read and then start to react to all the things that I want in my mind. So I try to say, we're going to read this this week next week, be prepared for the fact that we're going to work on that. So at least it gives everyone the heads up um, that that's going to be the project, you know, for next week. So yeah, I can, I could come up with some examples there, you know, but like, Hey, we're going to touch on all this stuff, the hard stuff in the present age next week, we're going to spend two and a half hours in the present age and we are going to learn the present age this week. And right. then after that, we'll work on little bits. You know what I mean? So, so for us at the core level, I mean, you, you, you know what you're going to do you know, it's not like you're going to rehearse a piece on Tuesday and then play it, play it Sunday. And maybe, maybe sometimes, but you yeah. know, like I, I, what I'm trying to say is for these, for these people on the core level working with their bands, um, you know, if we want to present something worthwhile on Sunday, they need to have some forethought, right? They need to think about this weeks in advance. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not always easy. You know what I mean? It's not always on, on you that it's hard to plan those kind of things. You know what I mean? There is a bit of, you know, obviously the relationship with the core officers and whoever plans the meetings and that kind of stuff to figure out. But for, for me, right. Like uh, we can do things at my core on one, one shot. Right. But it's gotta be pretty easy. But uh, at a bare minimum, I want like the first week where we read it, the second week where we work on it, and then maybe we can play it on that Sunday. But sure. you, have to, you have to really know what your group's capabilities are and then you know, kind of work backwards from when your goal of playing that is and figure out what the plan is. You know what I mean? So, uh, but most things, like if it's a, <clears throat> let's say like a Triumph Series you know, selection, um, you're talking a minimum you know, two weeks you know, to do that before I'm comfortable. If it's something that's bigger than that, then, you know, maybe it's six weeks, maybe it's eight weeks, you know, it's something that's, that's much more uh, intricate than that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, you do really have, to, I, I would say this is that, um, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be a bandmaster or if you're going to be a leader, you know, in the Salvation Army um, and let's say your, your band rehearsal is Tuesday night, right. Or whatever it might be. Um, it can't be an only Tuesday problem for you, right? Like you have to spend, you know, you have to spend other time trying to figure that out. Otherwise you, you can't have those kind of plans. You can't, you can't bring people along like that. You have to invest more time in it than just like it's that day. I have these scores out and get ready. Like you do have to actually spend a lot of time. So if you're only doing it on the day that you have your music programs, you're probably doing it wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're not, you're not really putting enough time into it because you're not giving enough thought to the, to the situation. But, and I'll say like, I, I'm beyond a planner. Like I could show you like silly notes from, you know, what I you know do for rehearsals uh, and stuff, but like, that's just the way I operate. Like I try to be as organized as humanly possible you know, with that stuff. So. Yeah.
Great. Does that answer Great. your question? Sorry, no. I just start talking no. and then let no, that's hope good, that it man. makes sense. That's good. Um, you know, preparation uh, is 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 crucial uh, and and planning. Um, you know, so when you're in a rehearsal, what what are, what are you really listening for? You know, a lot of people, especially uh, uh, younger people, you know, when they get in front of a band, they'll I, like I've experienced this. I'll go on a core visit and I'll I'll, I'll stop by the Fredericksburg Corps and I'll see. Geraldine uh, leading the uh, since she's here, I'll see Geraldine leading the uh, 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 the young people's band, and they're playing a hymn tune. They'll make it through, um, but to be honest with you, it just sounds like a hot mess. And then she get and then they get to the end, and she's like, "Okay, all right," and and maybe they'll just run it through again. So right. you know, like, what do they need to be listening for, and and how do they how do they address these things? Just simple right. things like you know blend intonation balance all that kind of stuff yeah and so um you know for for me right like the first kind of bar is like are you playing all the right notes right that's kind of the first like you know thing to to worry about there um which kind of then goes back to the previous thing like you need to know if they're playing all the right notes so you need to kind of have all that stuff in your mind whether or not it's, it's listening or whatever it might be um so that's you know one thing, right, you're clearly looking out for, you know, just right and wrong notes. I might say one of the really, like, one of the more important things, especially when it comes to uh, core bands and, you know, playing selections and that kind of thing is, um, you know, are the important things in the music coming out, right? Are, you know, um, is the melody, you know, with the words attached to the, is that the most important thing that's coming out, you know, in the music, right? Because that's, you want to have that be prevalent all the time. So it's a, a balanced, you know, kind of situation, you know, there. So that's an, an important thing. Um, obviously, when we want to start, we want to finish like all of our notes at the correct time and all that kind of stuff. Um, so a couple of things in terms of, of wrong notes and um, just getting people to play the right things. I think if you have the whole band play all the time, you may not be able to figure out who's doing it wrong, right? So let's say if you're playing, you know, the AIES stuff from, you know, from, from the South, right. You could, okay, well, let's just have, let's just have the first part and you can go through the first part and make sure that like the issues aren't there with that. Okay. Well, at least I know that's checked off, right. Then go to the third part because maybe you think the issue is there. Then you know where to pinpoint, you know, some of that, right. Okay. So the third part there, we're missing a couple of notes there. And I'll say, I will, I will never have anyone play by themselves. <laughs> ever i have never done it and i will i will not right because i know that there are people that just aren't comfortable with that you know but you can you can get to that in a smaller kind of setting you know in my in my core band you know, we're you know 17 18 people that's that's what size we are you know but so have that small group play and i can just say hey you know philip you're playing that you're playing that wrong right so in that smaller group kind of thing you you know that right so you can have all the parts be done be done there so that would be, you know, something in terms of helping out with the wrong notes is just separate it out, right? There's no, there's no reason to play through the whole piece four times if it's really only your third part that's making the mistakes, right? right. You know, in there. And it often is those, those inner parts that are the ones that are making, you know, making the mistakes and that kind of thing. So that would be the first thing I would say in terms of, in terms of, you know, wrong notes and just correcting that kind of thing. And that can go for just about anything, note lengths and, uh, you know, right style and all that kind of stuff, you know, do that in smaller groups, but I don't do it with just one person. Right. Right. Uh, you know, right. That kind of thing. Well, that's, um, that's a, that's a good thing to point out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for someone who's leading a group and maybe isn't necessarily like, maybe they know where the problem is. Yeah. Maybe they're not exactly comfortable, uh, you know, addressing the problem in a rehearsal or something like, like, or, or the specific group or person, right. like, what would you, what advice would you give them on that? Um, you know, like, <laughs> honestly, like I, I've always just been fairly like forward with it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like, and maybe sometimes like you go and just kind of like, you know, you talk closely to them. Right. So let's say it's the euphoniums and baritones. Okay. You lean over to like, you know, um, you know, Hey, Joy, you know, who used to be our co-author, used to play first baritone. Like, hey, I think no, you no, need no. to play. No, no, no. You mean, hey, Aaron Vanderweel. Come yeah, on. right. <laughs> no, no, but uh, like, you, the same thing would apply. Like, it, it may, not everyone needs to know exactly what the details of that one little thing are. And I think it, it helps people to be more comfortable. Like, you know, all right, hey, whatever your name is, right? 
I think you're, you're coming a little bit early here. Let's just move it. You know, if you just you know, play a little bit stronger here, that'll help out, but you can do it in like a, a personal way where it's not, you know, like grandstanding for the whole band. You can get close, you can get kind of um, intimate in that way and, and do that, you know, so that's what I would say. Um, but I really just say like, Hey, like you need to play louder there. You're playing it too short there. Like I don't try to use extra words, you know what I mean? And say, you know, I don't have the biggest vocabulary, right? So just like, you need to play it shorter. People understand playing it shorter. You need to play it louder here. People understand that. So just be as clear as you can uh, with that. And then I, the one thing, you know, going back to what you're kind of looking for in rehearsal or not, you know, when we're talking about balance and, and those kind of things, you know, that's the kind of thing where you do it so the whole band understands. So it's like, hey, Euphonium has the lead here. So everyone else, you know, you know could you hear the Euphonium when they were playing that? Could you understand what they were doing you know, at that moment. Okay. If they weren't, then right, we're playing too loud. So that's more of a collective, uh, you know, group effort. And then, you know, making changes to, you know, how loud or soft people are playing to help that out. Okay. Um, that's great, man. Uh, and I think, I think, uh, that's, that's plenty on that. I think they, that'll, that'll be very helpful for people. Yeah. And, you know, so how, I'm sorry, that- Dave, can I, sorry, can I like one more thing too? Uh, I, I told you I talk a lot. Um, no, go ahead. but like, you know, and if you're in like the zone where I guess you're getting kind of frustrated because you don't have the ability to make things better. Right. Um, and I think everyone's kind of been through that where like you're getting frustrated because like, well, I've been rehearsing this, but it's not, you know, um, you know, it's not getting better. It's not getting better. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, it kind of goes back to like, you know, earlier things, you know, the first thing might be is like, you know, maybe the music you've chosen is too hard or it's yes. not right for them, right? So that would be the first thing I'd think about, you know, maybe don't make it necessarily about yourself right away, because no one really wants to do that. You know, have you just chosen the wrong music, right? That would be the first thing. Um, and then the other thing um, would be like, are you, are you giving enough information to the people to understand what they're doing right or wrong, right? Um, you know, like, you know, don't speak in super generalities, you know, like, well, this isn't really going so well here. So let's just try this again. Like, you know, try to be as specific as possible so people understand what they need to improve on, um, you know, in, in that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, some other things, and we've talked about it, like you don't just want to only play through pieces. You want to separate things out. You want to separate, you know, parts out and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that would be some things, you know, if it's not really getting better. And then um, one last point to that is, um, even if things aren't getting to the point where you think it should get to in your head, you still have to give everyone the opportunity to perform and to play things in public. Cause there's nothing that's going to make people um, get as good as quickly as just having to do it. Right. That pressure of being able to like, Hey, the YP band, guess what? We're playing this Sunday, you know, and like all of a sudden, like that week, you probably have kids go and practice, you know, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, uh, yeah. right. They have to get used to that, like playing thing. And I think that'll fast forward everything to, um, yeah, to getting better quicker. So that was just a couple other things that I know we had kind of talked about before, but I just wanted to make sure yeah. I, I got them out there. And, and speaking of, of, of pieces beyond a band, right? So uh, about a year and a half ago, I think, Amelie and Geraldine, right? So for our youth band, um, we got to our first rehearsal weekend and on the stand was Celestial Prospect. Um, <laughs> But you know what? I know it is far beyond our band, but it's 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 like one of those future goals that we keep right. looking toward, you know, maybe like two or three years from now. Right. You know, we just kind of keep slowly working chunks of it away. Um, but you know, it's it's a lot of fun for a kid, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot that, of fun for us. That piece is hard. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. crazy hard. But anyways, yes, it is. Hey, so, um, you know, as far as dealing with personnel and all that kind of stuff, how, how, how do you keep bandsmen accountable? Um, well, for like their, with their spiritual walk, well, you know, making sure that they're a good representation of, of what, you know, the band is representing, mm-hmm. um, making sure that uh, uh, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, within the band and, and, and to prepare for rehearsals and all that kind of stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, the, the spiritual walk is probably the most difficult, you know, thing to, to navigate. Right. Um, but I think, you know, first and foremost, like you just have to have a relationship with everyone in your group. Right. Um, you, you have to be, you know, in a situation where people are comfortable enough 
you know, talking to you about things, you know, um, regardless of how old or young you are, you know, you need to be um, inviting enough where people can come and talk to you about, you know, such things, right? Um, so that's the first thing. It's hard to do much, you know, much more than that, you know, other than just going after people. Like you have to have a relationship where people are comfortable having any of those conversations with you. The second thing would be um, like if you see something that like really like shouts to them, you know, not, you know, living properly or doing the right thing, like you can't really be afraid of having, um, you know, and maybe it's even just a, a very simple conversation like, hey, I, are you sure about are you sure about that? Or, you know, like, are you sure about that group of people or whatever it might be? And that might be enough, you know, for, for certain people. And like, you just have to know your people and know what you can get away with, you know, saying to them. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, I'd say the, that aspect is like, you just have to know everybody and know how you can, you know, interact with them on that level. At the core, it's a lot easier. I'll say that, you know, because, you're with them on Tuesday, you're with them on Sunday, and often you're with them some other time, right? So you kind of just know a lot more um, about them all the time. You know, and the staff band's a little bit different because we, we kind of come and go. There's a lot of us that work at the building, um, but a lot of people do, do come and go. Uh, so that's a little bit more challenging. But in terms of the, of the core band, like just be in their lives, and I think you'll understand, you know, where you need to step in um, and where you kind of need to hold uh, people accountable. Um, and then, you know, with just about anything, you know, whether it be, you know, your spiritual walk or, you know, rehearsal attendance or preparing and that kind of stuff, the best thing you can do is just be the model of what you want them to be. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, one of, when I first took over the band um, at our core, uh, the core officer at the time, Norman Garcia, um, who is uh, lives in Canada now, but he played in staff band or whatever. I remember, he took me out to, you know, eat or something. And we were talking about different aspects of being, you know, the bandmaster. And he said, now, listen, Derek, you know, one of the things that you have to understand is that, you know, if there's something going on at the core and let's say we're in a meeting and I need, uh, I've opened it up for a time of prayer, like you better be the first or second person to stand up because everyone needs to understand that you're much more about, like you're, you're about more than just, you know, leading the band or that kind of thing, right? those things are very important. And so that really, that kind of hit home with me. And that was when I was 22, 23 years old. And it was just like, Hey, make sure that, that, you know, if we need someone to pray, it better be you, right? Yep. Don't let it linger for too long. Make sure you're that guy. And, you know, like now, like probably at our core, like, seriously, can someone else pray aside from Derek? Or like I close out like every worship time, you know, like in prayer, like I need to tap, you know, like bring in the lefty or something, right. You know, someone else to, you know, to do it. But like, People just have to know that that's what you're all about, right? And you know, Absolutely. with your, your preparation for rehearsal, if you show up unprepared for something, guess what? It invites everyone else to be unprepared. If you show up late for stuff, guess what? It invites everyone else to show up late. If you miss things, there you go, right? It's the invitation to, to do that. So um, yeah, I'd say I love with, it, man. All, with all those things, like it really just, you know, for me, like just be the best model you can be. And like, obviously I have, you know, my imperfections just like everyone else does, but like be, it comes down to two words, right? Be committed and be prepared, period, right? You could put everything into those two about, you know, being a leader in the Salvation Army. And that's, you know, I guess that's, you know, we could be done probably at that, right? Um, so those are the couple of things I would just say, but in terms of, you know, kind of pe keeping people in line uh, with, attendance and that kind of stuff you know with the staff band it's not really my my thing you know someone else kind of handles that and you have a team that can can deal with that um for the core i have like basically one rule right we're we're at a core that's very close to thq so we have there's a lot of differing schedules and um i basically say like i know you're going to miss and it's only a problem that i don't know right if there's a surprise then i'm we're not going to be happy i'm not going to be happy but if I know about it, you can miss, you know, seven out of 12 weeks as long as I knew that that was the plan so that I can prepare for it. So that's about as simple as I get is everyone's going to have their conflicts. As long as I know about them, we're cool. You know what I mean? So that that's there. Um, and then in, term, in terms of, you know, the, the music, you know, thing, um, I think you just have to stay, you have to stay on people, you know, with it, like, and set the bar really, really high and just, you know, keep trying to, to push at that thing. So you know, when you get to the close out of rehearsal, like, hey, this is what we did today. Here are the things that are coming next week. Here are the things that we need to work on. So 
one of the things that I like to do is um, I have a rehearsal list for every week, but then at the bottom I have what the rehearsal is rehearsal list is for the next week, right? Of right. what that looks like. So people can look ahead and sometimes that changes, you know, but I try to give, um, you give as many opportunities for people to get it right as possible, you know, there, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what I would, I would say on, on those couple of things, but I'd say always keep the bar high, you know what I mean? Just keep, keep pushing it as high as you can all the time. And, uh, you know, people, you know, people will, will continually reach for that, you know, and, and maybe for us, I think like in New York, we're a highly competitive spirit, you know what I mean? Just generally up around here. So I think you can yeah. challenge people in that way and they respond to it. You know what I mean? So, and maybe that's a little bit different than some other places. Okay. Great, man. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Commitment and, and setting the, uh, the example for everybody else. Uh, yes, you're right. It's, it's the main thing. And well, Christ is the main thing, but yes. Um, you know, and you just spoke about uh, character traits of a, of a band master and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I think, I think that's, that's good as far as, you know, what a bandmaster should be and model and, and the type of demeanor they should have. Are you, I'm, I'm just curious, are you kind of like a, uh, are you kind of like a, a tough guy in the rehearsal or are you more like a, you know, what kind of like your shirt suggests more of like a girly wimpy man? <laughs> <laughs> um i'm not i always say like i'm probably the wrong person to ask about about that like i don't know like if anthony's here and he wants to chime in you know but um i don't think uh i tough is maybe like a, a hard word you know what i mean but like my expectations are really really high you know what i mean in terms of the level that we're going to to achieve um and that kind of thing so like and going back to the, the earlier part, like I am fairly direct with what is happening. You know, like you didn't do this right. You didn't do this well. We need to do this better. These two things need to be matched up better. Like I'm fairly forward with those. I would say like, I don't think I'm a jerk, right? I never think that like I, I speak, you know, I don't talk down to people. Um, like I don't, I don't think I ever do that, you know, in terms of just being flat out mean. It's just very, these are what the facts are. And this is how we're going to make it better right? Like, I don't really make it, you know, obviously, it's not ever, never personal, but I, I don't think I'm a jerk, you know, with anything like that. If that kind of answers your question, you know, um, my, my standards are very high. Um, I don't think I'm a mean guy. It's just, it's all business. And that's it. You know what I mean? Okay. So I'm very business like, I'm very, you know, I'm very prepared with it all. And so I just just deal with the facts and nothing else there. Okay, I, I will say this, though. Um, I am not good at telling people they did things well, right? Like if something goes perfectly. Which is important. And, oh, absolutely. But I am horrible at it, right? I can, I can tell you that. Um, and I'm, I'm honest about it now is that uh, um, Nick needs to stop writing and sending me messages. Um, but uh, that's one thing I don't do. I clearly need to do that. You know what I mean? But we, we recently had, uh, we had a guest, you know, come into the staff band, uh, David King, who's, about as good as there is like maybe in the history of brass band things and like he um he he's more direct than i am right but he said to me and I, honestly i'm not sure it ever is something he's like but i think i actually am more positive than you are right where he would reinforce things that went well like hey euphoniums you know like that was perfect what you just played there so everyone else let's take a listen to what that what that just was that's what we're aiming for because that was perfect right I don't do that kind of thing. And that's been, honestly, I think people maybe just have it like, you know, guys in the band have been writing to other people doing classes with me and saying, Hey, could you just bring this up to, to Derek? You know, just so he does it a little bit more often. But I'd say that's, that's one big weakness that I have is that I'm so like stuck into the, this hasn't gone well, I'm going to make this better. This is the business of the thing where I don't really necessarily stop to say, Hey, Brindley, you sounded fabulous on that. You know, Cornets, you played this perfectly there or whatever it might be, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, in that light, you know what, everybody on here, if you happen to be looking for a great cornet solo to listen to from the light of the world, last night we had a stream and Jerry right there, Jerry, Jerry Lynn sounded absolutely fantastic on it, on the cornet solo. So props to Jerry Lynn. Hey, so um, before we run out of time here, we want to open it up uh, to see if anybody has any questions for Derek. And so, 
feel free to speak up before we go on to our last little um, bit here. Um, so if anybody has any questions, now is the time. Just uh, 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 turn on your camera and unmute yourself. And um, if nobody has any questions or if you guys are thinking, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Derek, is about uh, the future. Mm -hmm. um, so particularly, you know, with everything that's going on right now, what, where do you, what do you see happening maybe at least in, in the fall into the new year or what, what do you suggest, what would you suggest for, for all of us on the core level, you know? Yeah. Uh, who knows? Right. Um, no, I, I think, um, you know, in the, right, the summer is a little bit kind of a, a different thing to, to navigate because I think most people are kind of used to maybe being apart, you know, somewhat, you know, and, and kind of going their, their own ways. But um, for the fall, you know, I'd say, uh, you know, if you can make stuff happen, make it happen, right? You know what I mean? But like, I fall really, really in the line of like, let's be as you know, wildly safe as possible so that you know, we're not dealing with this for the next three years. You know what I mean? So be very responsible about what you're doing. Be smart about what you're doing. But um, don't like, take this as an invitation to just sit back and do nothing. You know what I mean? Um, I think there are different ways you can, um, you can accomplish a lot. You know, I think it, it comes back to, let's say, if, if it's your divisional group or if it's the staff band or what, whatever it might be, or if it's your core band of 20 people, like, you know, maybe the best way to accomplish stuff for the next couple of months is three groups of six people or, you know, like two groups of five, you know, whatever it might be, just, you know, this is your invitation. I'd say this like in work and other things, like this is your invitation to be as, as creative as possible and probably not get a whole lot of pushback on it. You know what I mean? Like there are a lot of rules all the time, you know, for, you know, in the army or for, for banding or, or just in life in general. But like, I think people right now, have really, uh, you know, kind of opened up, you know, the keys, you know, to, to let a, a lot of things happen. So use your creativity, you know, all the things that you thought like, hey, I'd really like to do that sometime. This might be the time to try it out, right? But I would just say, don't, don't let this be the, the chance to sit back and, and do nothing. Because if we, if we sit back and do nothing for six months, there may just be nothing at the end, right? So I might say, you know, as best you can, you know, put your foot on the gas pedal and, and do all that you can you know, keep being engaged, you know, with, with all of your people, um, like nothing worse than, um, you know, that someone is in your core band, like who just thinks you've, you've forgotten about them for, for six months because you haven't been meeting, you know, in that way. Um, so I'd say, you know, just stay really engaged. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, for us, like, I think we'll, you know, we'll try to invent some things to do, um, have a bigger, you know, online presence. Uh, we'll try to do some, some special things where people can, can see us, you know, even if we can't travel to places, but be, be inventive, um, you know, right now. So that's, I think for the very short term, you know, future, you know, that's, uh, that's it. But I'd, I'd say for, for people that are, that are aspiring, you know, to be leaders, it's a great time, you know, to pick up a lot of skills. You know what I mean? You have some extra time. Um, you have all these like resources that are out there where you can, you know, spend some time learning how to conduct learning, how to do different things. You can spend extra time you know, studying, so if you're someone who, who aspires to, to be a leader, you know, you know, don't, once again, don't sit back and wait, you know, for this time to be over, spend time now preparing to be that leader that you, you need to be in, in three months. Um, and I think that um, that's, you know, outside of this, you know, like outside of COVID or, you know, whatever's happening, you know, different places, you know, if, you know, if you're looking for like one bit of encouragement to, uh, you know, like to, to a young leader or, or a leader in general, is, you know, don't sit back and, and, and wait for a chance to do something, you know, make, make your own chance, you know what I mean? Um, take your own shot. And then, uh, you know, if you're committed, you know, to doing work, you know, good things are happened and you're qualified. You know what I mean? If you're willing and you're willing to work, you're qualified to be a leader. Yep. The Lord will give you what you need. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, if we don't have any questions, no questions, Stephen Do, Hall doesn't have a question. Bernie has a question. question. Is it only food related though? No. Nah. You okay. touched on something there that was really cool because in your territory, there's been a couple of, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I know in many places, there's been a couple of core that I've met over Zoom. 
you've used um you know media to record the band playing quicksilver and get everybody doing you've done a lot of things to try to get people engaged remotely but um are you seeing good um i don't, I don't know good results from just those simple touches like like those gatherings on a wednesday night or something yeah like in i should say like the staff band hasn't really met like in like a, a zoom way maybe i think only once or twice you know what i mean um but um, ours is a little bit weird in that we rehearse during the day we rehearse during the work day and all that kind of stuff but i think um you know for all of you know what's what what we've put out online um i think the the big thing is you know for me is that you still you wanted to be at the forefront of people's minds even if we've gone away like you don't want them to forget uh, that music is important that music has a huge role in the Salvation Army. Um, and, I, you know, up here and like every place else, we've had, you know, financial difficulties. You've had people that have, that have lost their jobs. You've had people that have been, you know, uh, you know furloughed for whatever you know, period of time. And that was just, you know, a fact of life, right? That's, that's what was going to have to happen, you know, in certain situations. And I just took the viewpoint early on of, yes, this is happening right now. But like my goal was always, you know, to kind of win the race back, you know, to, to stay in, in, in front of people's, you know, at the front of people's minds uh, to be visible so that people really understood that they missed, that they missed music. They, you know, they missed, you know, the ability to interact and, and be with people in that way and to connect in that way. So in, this will sound really, really bad um, what I'm about to say, but in some ways it, it, it's borderline a PR stunt. You know what I mean? In, in what we're doing in that, like you have to, if you're not out selling, you know, the product, you know, as, as music leaders and, and people in this position, no one else is going to do it for you. Right. So uh, that was kind of like my big thing was like, I just, I want to stay relevant. I want to stay out in people's minds. I want to, I want to have people remember how awesome the staff band was or how much they missed their core band rehearsal or how much they miss singing with people. So whatever you can do, uh, to, to do those things and to keep it close and to keep it relevant. That's kind of been my goal with all those. So I think, um, you know, for, for, for us, you know, there's no question that like, um, we've worked really hard. Let's just say that we've worked really hard to do all these things, but there's no question um, that people see a great value in what we're doing now um, what we've done in the past and how much, you know, how important we're going to be in the future. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure if they're all related, but like, I'm not willing to sit back and do nothing for two months and have people think that maybe they could exactly. go on without us. Like, yeah. period. like I, I'm going to, you know, I hate to put it in like a competitive way, but I'm going to win that. Right. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that music is at the forefront of all that stuff. And, um, like, I honestly get kind of worked up now talking about it where I'm just like, no, no, no. I like, I'm going to win that. I'm going to be right in front of people's minds and hearts all the time. And uh, if we're not trying to do that, then we're, then we're losing. Well, and it's for their own well-being as well, their own spiritual well-being. Yeah. I mean, you know, especially as salvationist musicians. Um, yeah, man, calm down. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I'm worked up there. Hey, hey, hey uh, what's the deal with the purple shirt? I, I just, I don't understand. I, I, it, whatever, it's a shirt, man, like get over it. Right. <laughs> so I, I like it, you know, it, it looks really good if you're on a golf course later today too. You I understand. I mean? You got You got a house of, of three ladies. You're, this you're is true. This is it's true. It's all good. Hey, all right. so here's some, here's some quick, uh, quick fire questions. Favorite composer. Um, <laughs> let's, can I, <laughs> Andrew Wainwright, can I say that? No, I'm just, he's here. No, I'm joking. Um, um, Le Leslie Condon, Ken Downey and Stedman Allen. I'm going to name three. Uh, lame. You didn't say Kevin Downing. Okay. So favorite March. Um, I'm going to name, I'm going to keep naming more than one. Proclaimers, which is the New York staff bands like March and the Crusaders. Okay. Uh, you're, oh, here we go. Favorite you're, bands. Okay. Listen, listen, you, I, you're not going to catch me off on this one, right? Because it has <laughs> happened before. So my, my favorite New York staff bands person is my wife, Lorena right? Easy answer. Easy answer. So a couple of years ago, we're at our future all-stars thing and everyone in the band introduced themselves, right? And like uh, Devante uh, Thompson, who plays euphonium in the staff band right now, 
like he's the, you know, he was the youngest guy in the band. So all the kids that are, uh, that are there, they all cheer for him as loud as possible, right? They're like, you know, going nuts for Devante. And I turn around and say, oh, don't worry. Devante is my favorite staff man from two, right? And then all of a sudden you hear from the cornet section, like, except for your wife, you know, like they're whispering, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I have messed that up once. Lorena is undoubtedly my favorite staff band. That's right. Favorite. That's right. Good man. Favorite yeah. meditation. Um, uh, simple one, Lord with my all, I part Richard Phillips. That's in triumph oh, series. Nice. Um, Shekinah, Ken Downey and just as I am. Uh, Bernie's so bad. Um, favorite tone poem, big piece. Um, okay. Uh, once again, I'm going to make it complicated. Uh, eternal presence by Eric ball. I absolutely love and, um, is significant to me. It's, it's technically a tone poem, but I, I don't really classify it as a big piece. I, I just kind of think of it as a meditation, you know, a longer meditation. I'd say then The Present Age and then Odyssey by Kevin mm. Norbury. Oh, I love that guy. Yep. All right. How about uh, favorite hymn tune? Uh, Churchberry. Mm. Favorite scripture? Uh, Psalm 139, connected oh. back to uh, Eternal Presence as well, which Eternal Presence is based on psalm 139 so That's there's right. a longer so story there but we there just you. spent an entire month on psalm 139 with our kids <clears throat> so hobbies and interests what do you like to do um i really like to play golf uh that's my favorite thing to do um outside of you know what my my life is you know music and, and family and everything but i i would play golf every single day okay all right and djembe djembe is not uh one of my <laughs> hobbies um but you know i'm just uh I'm really, really good at the djembe, so I might as well play. <laughs> yes, sure you are. All right, now I'm just curious. Are you currently on a diet? <laughs> um, we're all currently on a diet, right? Like everyone <laughs> is all the time. So I've been doing uh, like the keto-ish thing. I like to like ish, you know, kind of deal where, uh, so at like Christmas time, I weighed like about 250 pounds. And I think I was like 210 to 11 this morning. You know, so right now I kind of, I like come in and out of doing it, okay. you know, but yeah, you know, so there you go. So I'm doing nice a low job, carb brother. thing at the, at the moment. Hey, listen, folks, when y'all, next time y'all see Dr. Steve Counter, you're not even going to recognize the man. He's been on Noom. Ooh, he's like a little boy right now. Okay. And uh, let's see here. If you could not do this job, what would be your dream job? Um, like professional golfer. Oh, of course. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, to Aunt, uh, Bernie texted me and said, can I uh, beat Broom or Simmons Smith at a round of golf? I would assume so. Yes. Nick plays golf. I'm not even sure you'd know how to use a golf club. Yeah. All right. I think I can, I can <laughs> beat, I, can, I think I can beat Nick at just about anything. So I'll just say that. <laughs>